Hello friends, welcome back to Raju Notes channel, your weekly current affairs update. Today we will do the update from 9th of April 2022 to 16th April 2022. Last week we had discussed about our Indian homegrown civil aircraft, civil DO-228. Well, that aircraft thing what we had discussed has already started off. The same aircraft has now been deploy deployed in the state of Arunachal Pradesh and it has taken off and it is doing the connecting services for the passenger in this northeastern state. So this is a very good thing for country as far as the Atmanirbhar is concerned. So let's see more and more of such aircraft and we know that this aircraft doesn't need a proper runway to take off and land. It can uh, take off and land on the semi-paved runways as well. Amidst all this, India has also announced that the Indian Army or Indian military will train the Philippines military on the BrahMOS systems which we had recently exported in from the next month onwards and uh, the, again as far as the Atmanirbhar is concerned in the defense sector so both kind points can be kept in mind as far as the Atma Atmanirbhar and defense sector is concerned. Uh, as anticipated in our last update, Shahbaz Sharif has been elected as the Pakistan's new Prime Minister and we know that uh, the Shahbaz Sharif uh, who is the uh, brother of, uh, younger brother of Mia Nawaz Sharif and he's presently 70 years old. This uh, comes into effect because uh, the Imran Khan was removed as Pakistani Prime Minister after he lost the no trust vote against him in the National Assembly. As of now, Imran Khan is vowing. He has been calling uh, the countrymen to come out and do protests and he still wants to get back into power. But uh, we know why and how things are unfolding in Pakistan. Let's keep a wait and watch the further developments in Pakistan. Students taking any examination must now be aware as to what are the first kind of communic which had taken place between uh, Shahbaz Sharif and uh, PM Modi and how was his reply tweet uh, being seen by Indians wherein he had uh, taken out the topic of Kashmir. This week India and US saw its 2 plus 2 talks going on. We had discussed what is 2 plus 2 talks and we, India and US have signed a many, mem uh, many uh, memorandums and um, in that one of the important memorandum which you should be aware of is the memorandum in the field of space situational awareness also called as the SSA and um, here it, uh, India and US signed that uh, agreement to protect each other's satellites at any cost. So uh, we recently saw, uh, if you recollect, that there were some kind of uh, a, uh, uh, astral streaks in Maharashtra. You saw people call it as a meteorite, meteorites falling in Maharashtra and places. But we knew that that was a Chinese um, oh, sir, a satellite which had entered into the Earth's orbit and it was burning down as it touched the Earth. So just imagine a case in wherein once, once China decides that it, it will drop one of its satellite onto New Delhi. So what, what are the case in points for us? Or if China decided, decides to launch an, um, a projectile from the ground to the space and hit one of the uh, India's satellite. So, uh, this is where both India and US have come to uh, rescue of each other and they have signed that both will protect each other's satellite. How and what are the means? Let's uh, go ahead for it. The UGC has made an announcement that the students will now be able to pursue two full-time academic programs and this was unlike unheard of in our times but now students it's a good news for you uh, you will be able to pursue two undergraduate or postgraduate degrees or diplomas together in physical plus physical mode or physical plus online mode or online plus online mode so all this is possible except for uh, two programs that is for mphil and phd so go about it think about it and uh, do pursue these two courses one probably you are online and one offline, it will certainly help you out in your future prospects. Just day before yesterday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had inaugurated the Pradhan Mantri Sangrahale and this was done to honor the contributions of all Prime Ministers of India. 
The Sangrahalaya, or basically the library, features the holograms, virtual reality, augmented reality, multi-touch, multimedia, interactive kiosks, and computer kinetics sculptures. There are also smartphone applications and interactive scenes to make the exhibition content interactive. And we had seen some of the visuals wherein the Prime Minister was interacting with one of such screens during the uh, inauguration, and he becomes the first person to enter with ticket number one into this Sangrahalaya. Amidst all the tension again between Russia, Ukraine and US putting sanctions, the Indian delivery for S-400 Triumph air defense missile system of the second uh, squadron has already begun. And uh, this, uh, rather, this time the delivery of weapon system has been uh, you know, going on a fa much faster space uh, than anticipated. So you can see this in a larger picture as to when the whole world is putting sanctions on US, uh, sorry, uh, Russia, how come India is still importing not only its energy sources, but also the weapon systems, and how India still continues to evade any kind of sanctions from the world countries. And uh, one must bow down to Jen, Mr. Jay Shankar, who in a recent uh, one of the meetings had uh, you know, given it back to the US in two terms. One, number one, when he was asked that how India is, or rather how India is uh, importing so much of oil, oil and gas from Russia, Mr. Jay Shankar spoke that you know European Union must, instead of asking India, should ask itself as to how it is importing so much of oil and gas from it for itself that India takes one month and whereas it does the same kind of import in one afternoon. And that was one thing. And second thing, there was aspirations from US wherein US said that, you know, US is worried about the human rights uh, situation in India. Whereas Jay Shankar had categorically said that even India does monitor the US, uh, um, human rights situation in America as well. But it is a different thing that we don't discuss it and tell it out. But that doesn't mean that we don't look at the US. So this, these are two you know, savage kind of a statements give, coming out from India. It is giving out the uh, way India is thinking about the entire geopolitical system. So it is a good thing and one must keep that in mind while attempting any kind of questions in that way. Uh, and another update coming from the Russia-Ukraine war, the Russia's uh, super ship Moscow has been uh, destroyed. That has been uh, the Putin's Black Sea flagship. It has been sunk and now a lot of questions are coming in as to how this kind of a ship uh, could be destroyed by Ukrainians. Well, uh, the in one of the statements, the Russian TV said that the Russian warship uh, Moscow could not have been destroyed by Ukraine itself. It suspects that some kind of a power, unseen powers, either from US or the European Union has been used and it has led to the sinking of this powerful ship. So NATO uh, has been warned or rather Russia has warned the world that this can be called as a escalation into World War III and now it says that if NATO is definitely fighting against uh, Russia and if not NATO itself, its infrastructure is certainly fighting. So Russia now rather proclaims to have all rights to retaliate. I just hope because Russian uh, President Vladimir Putin had recently said that use of nuclear weapons, so I hope it doesn't escalate, but we will have to wait and watch on this situation as well. Again, an update coming out from the defense sector. The Israelis have successfully tested a new laser missile defense system. This is called as Iron Beam. We have seen what an Iron Dome is. And now a new defense system coming in, Iron uh, Beam. It is a, a high energy laser beam. It will be operational soon. And we have seen some videos coming up on YouTube wherein this laser beam was able to successfully intercept and destroy uh, UAVs, motors, rockets, and anti-tank missiles. So uh, it, is, it is said that each shot of this laser system works out around $3. And just imagine uh, the plight of a multi-million dollar missile being hit by a $3 
uh, anti-missile system that is this uh, uh, laser beam. So if this comes into play and if it starts its uh, production and then it goes into mass production, probably the art of war or the, the theater of war in which the present day uh, uh, projectiles are being used, probably they will undergo a lot of change. So a great thing as far as the field of defense is concerned, uh, you must see this video as typed, uh, uh, just go, go to Google and type as uh, the iron beam and see the effectiveness what, with what it was used. Again, amidst all this tension, yet, yet another good news, uh, Egypt he was, is considered to be the world's top wheat importer. And uh, ever since there was a commotion in Ukraine and Russia, Egypt had uh, probably a hiccup in getting its wheat, uh, wheat supplies from the Russian uh, subcontinent. So uh, India has pitched up to the same and India has offered, rather you, on the other day, Prime Minister was uh, addressing during the 2 plus 2, it, he had addressed and had requested the WTO that India be granted permission to step in to the void which has been created by uh, Russia moving out of the scene. So finally, there was a top level delegation which visited from Egypt, saw the crop, saw the uh, resources, and then it has approved India's wheat for their internal use. So with this, Egypt is rather looking to import for about 1 million tons of wheat from India, which is a very good thing. Now join this aspect with that of the farmers agita agitation which had taken place, how uh, the country had faced a kind of a toll for almost uh, three to four months, and just join the dots and see where this is leading to. Punjab is the leader for cultivation of uh, the wheat and now the farmers will enjoy a much much larger and a great price for its produce. We have recently seen the kind of situation Sri Lanka is going through in the present day turmoil, the economic crisis, how India is stepping up to fill in the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. Now on the same steps as a shocker, Nepal's is now announcing that it is running low on its foreign exchange reserves. Well, what is an indication? Again, this is an indication that Nepal is now going into an economic crisis. So if you, if you look at the Indian subcontinent, if you see its neighbors, all are going undergoing some kind of a, either a political or an economical turmoil. And India is the only country in the subcontinent which is strong, steady, and like we, I had said in the previous video, COVID has done a lot good for India. And now, rather, Russian and Ukraine war has also done a lot of good for India. And India is slowly emerging now into the global market. We had already emerged at the global pharmacy with the COVID. Now India is emerging as the global, rather, food supplier. Do, what do you think? Do leave a comment uh, down below if you agree or don't agree to my this kind of an analysis. Again, added to the same economic crisis, uh, uh, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. M. K. Stallion, had requested Centre to allow the state government ships to ship the essential commodities from the Tutukodi Put in Tamil Nadu to Sri Lanka as a humanitarian aid. And he has uh, especially requested this for the Tamilians in Sri Lanka. Recollect, if you recollect, just about four or five days back, the chief minister of Tamil Nadu had gone and visited Modi. Probably that time we were thinking as to what could be the topic as to how and why Mr. Stalin is going and meeting Modi. So this could be one of the reasons. And it is see the kind of implications what it will have if Tamil Nadu starts exporting its uh, rice, which is also produced in excess. And if that keeps going from Tamil Nadu to the Tamilians of Sri Lanka, well, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of this kind of uh, action which is being taken, whether the central will allow the state government to undertake such kind of uh, action, one has to wait and watch, but do work out the advantages and disadvantages of such kind of an act. Well, uh, these are the updates for this weekend. I hope uh, you get something out of these updates. And if you like it, please share and subscribe. And if you don't like it, then please do leave a comment. I will try to implement from the next one. The COVID variant of XE is not gone. We have seen China 
putting massive lockdowns in the country and rather frustration of the Chinese can be seen on YouTube. They are shouting from their houses and they are not been allowed to move out. Shanghai is totally under a lockdown. So guys, there is, there is chances of this XE variant coming to India. So please wear your mask. Don't become complacent and take care of your loved ones. I'll see you next week, next Sunday with much more updates. And till then, stay home, stay safe, take care.